We're going to check out a fundraiser called Art for AIDS. It's designed to send kids with AIDS to summer camp. We'll also check out the work of two foreign artists who've settled in Toronto. We're going to use the, uh, the cheap dollar store cards and you'll find out why in a second. Here. Okay, can you hold the one for me there? I'm going to start with the eight and I'm just going to fold it in half. And then we'll take the, uh, the five here. See, it doesn't matter. It's not that kind of card trick, what uh, cards they are. So I'll just take the five and we'll stick it right inside of the eight. Now I'll open it up so you can see that. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fold it back the other way so now the eight would be inside the five. Real easy to, uh, to follow. And uh, the back is on the inside right there. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a warp in the eight of hearts. Now, if I flick the card hard enough, it should work so that when I push through, the card will actually look like it turns itself inside out. Doesn't that look real? Cool. Yeah, that's Let's see if we can get the, the eight on the inside. Now, I'll push it back again. All right. And you can see that it'll actually it'll turn itself back out the other way. This is the weirdest thing. My background, I was born in Hungary, Budapest, Hungary, and I came to Toronto about 18 years ago. And I carried the dream of painting, and uh, finally I put on a show and uh, hopefully succeeding with it. How would you describe your work? My work is uh, very much influenced by Picasso. I love cubist and abstract work, even though when I was younger I uh, I couldn't stand Picasso. I was more fond of uh, Michelangelo, Ruben, uh, and uh, one of most of the greater artists, which is more realistic paintings. What changed your mind about Picasso? I think uh, you grow into it. You do more and more realistic, and then you need uh, you feel the need for more ex exploring, more different avenues. And, and abstract is definitely more interesting to me. It's uh, up to the viewer, of course. So do you have a lot of people saying your work reminds me of Picasso? Yes, quite a few. They say um, they say you have a Picasso, try to have a harmony with it. And uh, hopefully it uh, won't perceived as a following. What I try to do is explore what he started and uh, God knows where I'll end up. This is uh, called Beaters and this is basically women in a spa enjoying themselves and relaxing in the, in the atmosphere getting rid of the daily stress and of course is expressed in a cubist abstract way. This painting is a blind man playing a harp and the painting symbolizes uh, the communication of the person. He can't see but he, he can see the colors uh, through his music. And our next painting coming up here would be the bullfight which uh, expresses the hardness of the coolness of the bullfight basically you see the angry bull and the man killing the bull which I don't completely agree with and we turn this into a sport which is still practice in uh, Latin American countries and hopefully one day it will stop our next painting here is called the birth and it's probably coming from I just had a newborn son six weeks ago and uh, it's more coming from inside uh, from, my, from my life experiment, experience. This is the man with the mandolin, which is presented in a very cubistic way, sort of uh, taken into pieces the image and uh, put it in a flat surface. And if you look at carefully, you will notice the man and the mandolin in it. You just have spent some time looking at it. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days, uh, sometimes it takes me weeks. It's all up to the inspiration. Uh, sometimes I start a painting and then the end finish is going to be a completely different painting. I throw shows, I uh, deal with art dealers, uh, collectors. There's a few collectors who've been buying my work and uh, that's been great. Art's been good to me. Uh, I'm from uh, Iran and uh, I came here 10 years ago and I'm glad that I made it to Canada. It's the best country in the whole world. I love 3D because it is uh, pretty close to the viewer and it can break the dense distance uh, between the viewer and the art and it can feel more close to it and uh, actually it can feel to be there, some part of the art actually. And how long would it actually take to do a piece? 
Uh, so it depends what, what kind of a piece you do. If, if there's a lot of design in it and a lot of coloring and it takes a lot of time. Camp Chrysalis is a project of families and children experiencing AIDS, which is face AIDS. Um, we've been around for about four years. Uh, this is our second year of running a full-length summer program in our own site. Uh, we run six to eight weeks of camp for families and children who have HIV or AIDS. What sort of things do they do in the camp? All the regular camp stuff. Canoeing, kayaking, swimming, sports and games, arts and crafts, fun, camp fun. And how many kids will go this summer roughly, do you know? Um, somewhere over a hundred. I don't have final numbers yet. But so do events like this help your group out a lot? Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks to the, uh, the graciousness of Mark Stenabaugh, who's taken us under his wing to, uh, to raise money for us and help our cause. Yes, absolutely. That may be good. Well, congratulations. I hope you have a good summer. Thank you. Uh, last year, I heard about Camp Chrysalis Face AIDS, a family and children experiencing AIDS, and we were looking for a charity to host uh, a dinner called Dinner with the Stars for on World AIDS Day, and it's a day that I invite all the personalities that I work with during the course of a year to come and people pay to have dinner with them. Um, and so to continue, uh, I had friends of mine who are also artists and they wanted to have an opening night and I strongly suggested that opening night be held to benefit a charity and they asked me to choose it since I was the host and I chose my retirement fund and that was turned down so then we decided to take Face AIDS uh, uh, Camp Chrysalis and it's, I can't think of a better charity. There's nothing more, um, I guess, heart-rendering than listening and hearing about a child of two or three who's done nothing to no one and um, they, they have that horrid, horrid disease.